What's good, YouTube? It's your boy FB Aftermath back with another video. Now, throughout the years, I have constantly gotten questions about you know me and football, and I kind of want to you know clear things up on things that I you know wish I could have done um, back in the day. I'm starting now with with sports, football, whatever it was, and um, just kind of give insight to the young on you know what they should be focused on and possibly why you know i didn't make it to where i could have been to this day now starting out i loved sports loved playing football loved playing basketball love you know doing track did not care to watch the sports I, I didn't care my dad would always try to get me to watch football watch you know whatever i actually watched track meets and basketball but i didn't care to watch football i just didn't i always, always go and play video games instead and I think, you know, one, that's one thing that held me back from understanding the game a lot more. I understood the game. I knew how to play, you know, positions um, to read defense or to read offense. I knew how to do these things. But I could have pretty much expanded my, my vision a lot more if I was to continually watch. I always watch, you know, myself in highlights or if, if coach was had a, uh, a game that we were trying to watch I would always watch myself in the defense of course and you know what I could have done better for the next game but when it comes to just going home studying other players I didn't really do that now that being said um, I wasn't knowledgeable enough to um, how do I put this I don't think I had the knowledge as far as politics to expand in the football world and what i mean by that is those nike spark uh trainings those those pretty much those football camps as a kid where they put you in you get ranked you already get ranked if you're like a good enough player um in high school but these are like special camps where you get on those big boards and those colleges actually look at i didn't know about that my parents didn't know about it i didn't know about it and I'm realizing over I've realized over the years that those are very beneficial factors when trying to become a D1 athlete and possibly going into the pros. Training pretty much, you know, two times a day always was a main thing and being a Texas athlete, training was always there. I would always train no matter what whether it's basketball, football, or track. The training was there. But it's the getting out there part that held me back. I just pretty much went to school, went to practice, played in the games on Fridays, you know, went to practice again Saturdays, Sundays off, and that was kind of my whole routine all of high school. Even before that, when I was a kid, I played football, and it's it's the little things that matter. As a matter of fact, uh, my good friend from high school came in um, a week ago, and he explained to me that there was something going on with the, the teammates that I didn't even know. Players, we were good athletes. We had really good athletes on the football team in Texas. But we just had this this bad energy that just kept showing itself in games. Like I, I couldn't understand why with our with our key players. And come to find out, our key players would smoke weed um, before the games. Now I understand you guys can argue with me about that, you know, help them calm down. Blase, blase. At the end of the day, bro, we is not have smoke. Smoking before a game is not a clear mind. I don't care who you are. It's not a clear mind. You, you're you're not conditioned to play in those in that manner. You, you're just not. And I've just like realized. I just found this out literally like two weeks ago, y'all. Two weeks ago. So you you can't imagine how honestly pissed off I was when I found this out. All those games that we could have really done something. Uh, for really, you know, came a, a lot closer, um, or even one, even one that would have took us to playoffs or something. And for something stupid as smoking before games, we lost those chances because we had selfish players. And I honestly, we both, we all bust our asses throughout the week, train hard, uh, do practice, and then you want to fuck it up for some selfishness before a game. Like, that really pissed me off, you know what I'm saying? So for all you high school t teammates out there, or high school players, whatever you're doing, like, if you're gonna be an athlete, be an athlete, do what athletes do. Don't do dumb shit before games. Take practice seriously, take the game seriously, because somebody on that team is trying to make it somewhere. 
and your your position football is a team sport basketball is a team sport track is really not but it kind of is you are trying to help um bring up each other as a team you know what i'm saying yes there are individual um assignments and yes there are individual uh looks from scouts but at the same time you still rely on your teammates to get to a higher level and that's what i was missing because i was doing my part I was being as good as I possibly could for the football team, getting my training in, um, being ready every every Friday before games. And now I can't rely on my teammates. And I always, I always felt that way. I've always felt that way. I could not rely on my teammates to do their job and really put all their effort in. I mean, I'm out here trying to die for my team, for my squad. You feel me? I'm out here trying to die for my squad. And we got players that aren't even taking this serious. So I pretty much put that on just bad luck you know my positioning and and growing up with football is just bad luck you know bad teammates um when i mean bad teammates I mean teammates that don't care as much as you do um not being smart enough when it comes to training camps and stuff getting in training camps which is very important um yes i left school um my senior year because i was selfish i was on defense i was a defensive player and in my mind i was like why am i a linebacker when i look at linebackers in the nfl i'm thinking 6'4 240 50 60 pounds you know running four fours um and i'm like dude i'm i'm barely even at the time i was like 5'10 5 5'11 5 I'm, I'm barely even tall enough you know what i'm saying and i only weigh like 205 you know, junior year of high school. Like, why do you guys got me on linebacker? They even put me on defensive end. And I'm like, bro, why am I on the line? Yes, I was I was fast off the edge. I understood I liked getting sacks, you know, but I became selfish um, after my junior year and I wanted to play running back because as the Leo that I am, I wanted the attention that I felt like I deserved. And I ended up leaving my senior year to a whole nother school and I had scouts. I had scouts um, New Mexico, um, Alabama, Oklahoma State, uh, Texas A&M. I had plenty of D1 schools already scouting me, but they did not let me know. My dad knew about it, but he didn't let me know either. Um, my decision to leave to Merlin was just random to them. They didn't understand why, but I did it anyways. Um, and um, yeah, I made that decision, moved to Merlin, played running back, had a great season. My team was trash, I'm going to be totally honest, had a great season. Um, had an issue with my high school coach at the time. I went to F Fort Meade. Um, I did not get my football highlight until like the end of track season, which really messed me up into getting started with what I needed to do um, to you know play for D1 school, D1 AA. He kept pushing that I go to a JUCO or something um, because of my grades or something, which we all know. I could have made something. Some things can be done you know, to, you know, red shirt or whatever to help me get into a D1 school. And I didn't want to do that. So I was just constantly sending my highlight out to all these coaches, coaches, coaches. And, um, you know, one school that was mainly interested in me um, came from Stevenson, Stevenson University, which is the only university I went to out of high school. And I didn't know the difference between D1, D2, D3 like that. And uh, come to find out when I'm already into the school they just had started a football team and i was already at the, the the damn school for a semester we were training for practice and i'm like you know it was a game and stuff he was like oh we, we don't our game's not until next season we're we're just practicing and stuff I'm like bro like i'm i'm trying to get in on the field like now so it's a lot of me being uh just like selfish and just like ready and it's just young it's just young me i wanted to play ball i didn't want to sit here and wait um, if I was sitting and waiting at a D1 school, then sure, you know, I said, I understand that, but I'm not sitting and waiting at no D3 school. So I ended up leaving and, um, you know, just trying to find a way at these junior colleges. Um, and, and they'll see my highlight. They saw my highlight. It was like, hey, we want you to come in, come to our school, went to Navarro. Um, coach was like, yeah, we want you to play running back. Come to find out, the same running back from high school is a running back for Navarro, my boy DeMarcus, which he's he's a good running back. He's fast as shit. He's faster than me. I feel it. So I get there. They're like, all right. I go to the line. The running back coaches, he was like, no, nah, you're over there. I'm like, over where? With the linebackers. So here we go again. Like I'm like, fuck, you, you brought me on to play running back, and now all of a sudden, first day of practice for me, I'm a linebacker. So it's just like I was just – 
infuriated. Like, do these guys think I'm sorry? Like, what's the deal? And like, we already got enough running backs. I'm like, but you ain't even giving me a chance yet. So it was just the fact that they didn't give me a chance yet um, to prove myself. Um, and they just automatically said, you know, with your build, we're going to put you at linebacker. Um, and so, long story short, I, I went through that, had some financial issues, dropped out of school, um, went back to school, Tyler Junior College, same situation. The thing about Tyler Junior College is, bro, I did not like the running back coach. Uh, he was immature. Um, he was like the same age as us. He was a young coach, immature, and just on something else. Like he didn't, I don't know why he didn't like me for whatever reason, but he didn't even give me a chance to be a running back. And that pissed me off. And I'm a very emotional person. As like a Leo, you know what I'm saying? Birthday coming up July 28th in like two days. What, three days? July 28th, 25th right now. Um, I just couldn't get past like why this dude did not like me so much. And was he jealous of something or like what? Because I was definitely the strongest dude on the team. I was one of the fastest on the team at Tyler Junior College. But, you know, like, what is it? And the only reason I didn't pursue or continue to pursue uh, trying to play for co uh, Tyler Junior College was because the head coach is pretty much a dick. Um, and on top of that, I got injured. I ran a 40. I ran a 40-yard dash. I kid you not, bro. I kid you not. I ran a 40-yard dash. It must have been a fast time when i say i used to train for the 40 yard dash religiously i studied everything i possibly could to make sure that my 40 yard dash like i was fast as shit for the 40 yard dash i did i ran my first 40 yard dash all the coaches stopped right the the guy uh that clocked my 40 i don't i don't i don't even know the time i don't even know the time the guy that clocked my 40 stopped everybody looked all the coaches he called the coach over he showed the coach the head coach said run it again the head coach said run it again so i you know preparing myself now everybody's watching because they're trying to you know see if you know this is for real for real or like you know i run it again and as soon as i right before i um passed the the, the finishing line i pull my quad it's right before, bro, I pull my quad. Coach looks at me, shakes his head, walks away, and I'm just like bawling, crying, just hobbling. Like I, I kid you not, bro. Like I was bawling, crying, hobbling back to my dorm room, and I was like, yo, I think I cried for like two or three days, cause I was like, like that's it. At that point, that's like, that was, to me, that was like, I'm probably never going to play football again. You know, like, this is the third school I've been to, and I just messed it up off of something so dumb. I warmed up as much as I could, you know, I just probably just overexerted myself or whatever training um, for that day, and here I am with the torn quad or pop quad, whatever, um, quad, and I just lost my chance, because I was getting hype, I was getting hype and excited, because if he called the head coach over to show him, like, my numbers, and the head coach was like, do it again, then it must have been something fast, because I remember, I ran a 427 at Kilgore, um, at Kilgore's tryouts, right, I ran a 427 at Kilgore's tryouts, I kid you not, this was back in 2012, I believe, and the, the 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 team they were hyping me up. It was like, yo, bro, you on? Like, you know what I'm saying? The coach, you know what I'm saying? Talk to the coach. They said they would give me a call, but it was a money grab. They charged the athletes twenty dollars to try out. I don't think anybody got a call back. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna be totally honest. I should have got a call back because I killed that tryout. And that's just how it be, man. Like, it's just politics, a whole bunch of bullshit, bro. And on the real, don't take it personal. These coaches, bro. I'm just going to be keeping it 100. These coaches just be on some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Think they know what they're doing. A lot of them really don't, but you just got to deal with it anyways. I felt like I got hold multiple times. I, I bled my heart out for training and getting ready for, you know, sports football, period. And it's just like, yo, at that point, I was just done. You know, I was just done because nobody, it's just like nobody wants to give you a chance. 
And if you feel that way, like, I'm, I'm with you, bro. I've been there. And people, you know, ask, like, you know, what happened with the Jets or something like that. And, bro, like, honestly, I trained my heart out for those three months for football. I don't think I did bad. I don't think I did really bad at all when I was at the Jets uh, mini camp. I was at the pro day. Um, I mean, the, the rookie, rookie mini camp. I think I did good. The only thing I just needed time with was under, like learning the plays more, you know what I'm saying? And I spent time learning the plays. When when you're in the classroom, I could, you know, memorize, talk about it with the coach, ask questions, but it was just getting on the field, putting it down together, especially if players aren't moving as it as it's supposed to be when it's on the PowerPoint, then that's just like, okay, you know. or But I knew if I'm running right or left or which hole to hit, stuff like that, uh, yeah, I fumbled once. I fumbled once because I was nervous. That was it. This was like, you know, you just I just had to get that out. But after that, I was good. Caught the ball, uh, ran the correct plays. Um, you know, even coach had the the head coach of the Jets has good stuff to say about me. It wasn't nothing bad. So I don't know. Honestly, I just don't know why I didn't get hit back up. Um, but I mean, I do know they didn't want to take the chance on me. Um, they wanted me to prove myself even more by going to CFL and stuff like that. And at this time, I had already established a brand for myself. So it was like, dang, like, do I really go to CFL, try to, um, you know, give, you know, a year or two in for football, try to make a name for myself with, with hopefully not getting injured on like a $50,000 budget uh, income, which was literally like at that time to me, I mean, even still now, if it's down dollars, it's just like nothing, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a, it's a tough mental battle for me to just like constantly deal with, you know, thinking about football period, because yes, do I still want to play? Like, yes, like I, I still want to play, but now I'm at the age, I'm about to be 28 in three days. I'm about to be 28 in three days, and now I'm at the age where I think more about injury, or I think more about longevity of stuff. You know, back when I was in, in, in the beginning of YouTube days, I was doing a lot of crazy stuff, and you see that I've calmed down a lot on that because now I have to think about the future. My recovery is not as fast, you know, getting hurt, and I don't want to go through the same stuff I went through in the past, which is kind of holding me back because I'm like mentally like these coaches are just going to use, abuse me, toss me around, do whatever they want until I can't do shit no more. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how it is. That's how the game is. You know what I'm saying? I'm at the age to old enough to understand that. But when you're younger and you're trying to go in, you don't you don't care about that. You're young. You're healthy. I'm still healthy. Uh, you know, I don't have like those football injuries and stuff. Um so I still like I still feel like I can go in and like do some work, but at the end of the day, it's like, man, I don't know, bro. It's just like, damn, bro. Like it's it's tough. It's mentally tough, you know, watching pro athletes and like just dealing with that and the what could have been and like I don't want to be that person that's growing and like I used to blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? I truly like gave it my all when trying to go, but my stubbornness kept me from really pursuing it. Um, like I should have. I pursued it what, like I, I should have in my my own mind, but how I really should have is like, all right, you know, we'll go to the CFL, we'll try it out, you know what I'm saying? Which I, honestly, I still possibly can, but now it's just the mental gap of staying injury-free and making it those one or two years to be able to have a chance to even play in the NFL. Um, so... Bro, you know, this a message, a message to the young athletes, bro. At the end of the day, I hate to say it like you got you got you got to take care of you first off. Make sure you good, you know what I'm saying? If you need to get your team whipped up in shape, you know, get on their ass too because you trying to go somewhere and you need their ass. You know, if they don't want to play on your level, then they need to replace. They need to be replaced. Simple as that. And, bro, like, we were just talking, like, me and Angie, we were just talking about Booster Club. Booster Clubs run the team, you know what I'm saying? Usually a Booster Club son is the quarterback, and they pay for the team and blah, blah, blah. And you could probably have a better quarterback, but since the Booster Club wants their son first string and blah, 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 or they ain't going to pay the money. Like, bro, football is such, like, politics and bullshit, bro. On the real, man, it's just, 
I don't know, but that's that's all I'm gonna say for now. As though I didn't make NFL and you know what could have been in the past, but we'll have this conversation another day. You feel me? So like and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm I'm done talking. When I was a little boy, I wanted to be a hero. The truth is, when you get older, sometimes things don't always turn out the way you hoped they would. So you gotta do what you gotta do. Handle that business. Believe in yourself. Create your own destiny.